Okay, today uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, our journey with Crowdhouse, uh, going from uh, the more output driven approach to more content driven approach. So, it's really about the journey that we took. I cannot tell you what the, like, I don't think we have arrived at a very desirable and even end goal where everything is perfect now. Because it's not, so this is just a journey and I hope you can learn something from it. So this is not the expert presentation that tells you how that works. Yeah. And I hope you already have a little bit of knowledge about awesome written uh, goal setting and development. This is gonna help. And otherwise I'm happy to answer any questions you have later with the knowledge that I possess. Okay. So some context first. Where my my name is Magnus. I am the director of product and platform experience at Carbos. At the moment, I started there like a little more than a year ago. And when I started, uh, I started as an agile coach. So my then like at the I think at the end of last year, I was presented with the opportunity like, hey, don't you want to do that? And I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. Let's try it out. Uh, so I've been doing that now for almost a year. Very interesting job. Um, yeah, and so, but the point being that it was always a little bit my job to facilitate uh, this whole setting process, as was I was always very deeply involved in that, together with our tools. Uh, what is Crowdhouse? So, uh, Crowdhouse, find us there. We are basically a real estate transaction platform. Oh, can you see that? So, can I get rid of this? Yeah, minimize it, minimize it. What's that one? The minus. Uh, well, like the yeah, uh, we are a real estate transaction platform for Switzerland. So if you ever thought, hey, I want to invest my money in some real estate and earn some return on the equity that I put in there. Because that's the uh, so this is what we do. We basically have two sided platform uh, <laughs> where you can invest in the yellow card. Next on this journey, where does it start? Actually, start our journey that I want to basically take you on in the third quarter, the beginning of the third quarter of 2018. Uh, at this moment, the product team in Crowdhouse is composed of two cross functional teams. We're using a Kanban approach. Yeah. Uh, Crowdhouse itself is 80 people, the whole company. Yeah. And I joined at this point, so this is where I can give my account. Um, then uh, the end point, or the end is basically now, in Q4 of 2019. We have arrived at five teams in product. That is like around 30 people. They're still cross functional teams, uh, but we're using now more you know, like a scrum band thing approach. Yeah. Uh, and Carlos itself grew to about 130 people with the assistance, of course, of, uh, for example, Matt, who was a hired me. Thank you. Uh, okay, and then that, like also definitions. Uh, who of you is familiar with OKRs? Okay, skip. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Uh, I'm just gonna make some definitions. So what do I mean when I say output? Uh, output is all the things that we do to produce an outcome: features, initiatives, ethics, whatever, tasks. Yeah, all of this is basically output. Uh, when I speak about outcome here, uh, I use this um, uh, the siding, Josh siding. Uh, basically, the definition is it, uh, an outcome is a change in human behavior that creates value. Yeah. This has been a little bit changed in this book. He says that uh, uh, I think drives business results, changes it to value now to incorporate different kinds of value. I use the new one here. Um, they are, in my mind, framed as objectives and cue points. So it's the same. We have the objective, the qualitative expression of a desired outcome, 
and gives us quantitative measurement. It tells us if we have achieved the goal. Yeah? This is, gives us a good measure, basically, the human behavior we want to do. Okay. We start off. Yeah. When I joined the Q3 2018, I'm going to just use these as a little bit of indicators with so some numbers, since we're talking about numbers. Uh, when I joined, there was an OKR system in place. And I was like, yes, this is how you do product development. OKRs are amazing. Yeah. Uh, we had, at that point, 61 objectives in total and 166 key results. Yeah. So all of that stuff was supposed to cover Basically, almost everyone in the company, yeah? And also everything that we were doing, yeah? So, what worked at this point was the tooling. We had a tool that was kind of working, we were seeing stuff. The visibility worked. We, we saw the goals and we would have theoretically been able to see what everyone was working on, yeah? If not for the things that didn't work, what didn't work at this point was uh, the alignment. They were not really aligned. There was so much stuff. Everyone was doing things. Everything was oh, okay. It's fucking good. Uh, so uh, horizontal and vertical alignment. That means uh, so basically the the bottom up, top down thing, but also between the teams was not really functioning. Uh, not all teams were also participating. There were some teams that maybe got assigned these things once they kind of forgot, some of them didn't have uh, OKRs. Uh, also, the initiative definition did not really happen on the basis of these OKRs. It was a little, sometimes it was a little bit the other way around. So, ah, we have this init the initiative that we're doing, let's just set a goal for that somehow. Uh, the updating of numbers didn't always work. So some of this stuff, like I said already, was abandoned. Uh, a reason for that being that sometimes the measurements were simply not good at this moment. We didn't have the numbers. We didn't know where to get them. Or we didn't understand them well enough. Then like, one of the symptoms that you might see there that is happening is that if you do OKR check-ins, they turn into, what do we mean by that? How is that calculated? And like the whole, what is supposed to be 15 minutes, turns into 45 minutes of that. Yeah. Uh, but still, our emotions are high and our hopes for the whole thing. And like, yes, I'm sure this is like, yeah, this is gonna lead us to success. Yeah. Uh, so what changes did we do for Q4 2018 based on the quarter three that we just went through? Uh, our goal was to create better alignment. We're improving the OKR framework. We kind of double down on the thing. Yeah. And we wanted to involve everyone. Because the solution was that everyone just needs to do it, don't work. Yeah. Uh, we did what we did then is uh, okay. All workshops generate basically the competent level OKRs. So that's basically management going on a big offsite and designing the things. Yeah, together with uh, the product managers. There we kind of did, figured out basically what our company level OKRs were supposed to be. <coughs> Uh, we also introduced an OKR moderator role uh, who will be responsible for creating the OKRs with the teams. They were like structured in each business unit with one OKR moderator, and that role was the main like knowledge leader for that. It's something similar as well. Uh, then we also offered documentation and training. <coughs> the management on those trainers so the they changed the, the, the wording of the moderators. We trained them, we trained the management, and this is how we then uh, basically set the next goal. So it looked a little bit like this. Yeah, so over here we have the company level management uh, that basically decides on uh, the company level OKRs, then the squads, or teams. Yeah. Uh, we're brought in to think about how can we actually influence the results in those company OKRs. Came up with a bunch of key results, prioritized and ordered them into objectives. 
those became the team OKRs. Okay, okay, <laughs> and then uh, there was a 360 uh, alignment process where you align with everyone, one thing worked, uh, where we integrated feedback, boom, aligned OKRs. Yeah? So this is what we love. <laughs> So Q4, we landed at 53 objectives, 128 results, a little bit less, which is good, maybe more focus, yeah, maybe. Uh, what worked? So we had less objectives and Q results. That's good, it's maybe it's more focus, yeah? What could be an indicator that this is more focus? Everyone was involved now. Yeah? For better or worse. Everyone had to deal with that. Uh, what didn't work? Didn't work. Uh, some teams really had a hard time uh, adopting the underlying principles. And since we were introducing it to so many teams, we didn't have time to address uh, their reservations and the risks that they saw and uh, that they had also with the framework. Yeah. Uh, specifically, business units who have been doing a job for like this for a very long time already, longer than. Like if you if you're trying to disrupt the new industry, there's stuff that has been done the same. And uh, so why should we suddenly change to something like this? And you should have a good answer for that. We weren't there to provide it because it was the right thing. Uh, still, measurements of not possible, not well enough understood. We didn't work on that. Still was a problem. Uh, teams started abandoning those things. They became meaningless for them. Because they weren't able to kind of bake it into their process, bake it into their work, <coughs> and then start living it. Uh, there was a lot of only going through the motions. So that means, yeah, we come, we look at the stuff, we kind of say that it's useless, but we do it every week. We do it, okay, I'll check it. We do it. Uh, uh, the feedback to the teams uh, on their OKRs and initiatives uh, was also difficult. So that uh, this is basically the, the vertical alignment. But because there were so many teams and also the management was doing it for the first time, it was difficult to provide really high quality feedback to, uh, that is needed to, for, for the teams to then actually align and improve this. Yeah. So most of the feedback was happening on the process level, not on the content, for example. Alignment. Everyone now were uh, aligned, with self organized, was really difficult and it, it didn't work. And it took us a really long time to set. Uh, this caused frustration in teams and management about the OKRs. We were already, we were already like getting suspicious at that point. Eh? Eh? What is this? Is this useful to us? Why are we doing this? Then it was the change of the year. Yeah. Things were stressful. Yeah. We introduced a new management structure and the strategic switch. It was a big strategic effort that was to be undertaken by our teams. Uh, and we needed to realign basically to achieve that. Yeah. We had several products living on their own. We wanted to have them all on the one move. So we wanted to basically put them all together, connect the dots between uh, our products and make it into more of a uh, buzzword ecosystem. Uh, the new management was then put into place. It's actually just uh, a new management. I was basically promoted to my position at that point. Uh, and this changed a couple of structures. Yeah. But of course, for everyone, we had to adapt to the um, we did not, as a result of that, put a lot of energy into the OKR framework uh, or procedure. <clears throat> so it just stayed the same. Uh, but we made some changes to our development process that were a little bit more impactful. So for, uh, across all teams, we introduced two week iterations and like showcases. So we would showcase the work that we were doing to uh, the rest of the company. So this is the Scrum. Are creeping in. Uh, and we also introduced the discovery and delivery 
concept. Before we were only thinking about, I wouldn't say we were only thinking about delivery, but uh, mostly we were optimizing for delivery. And this is from uh, Marty Kagan, the book that you want to read if you're interested about that. Uh, inspired. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you have already. Uh, so that lands us in Q1. We needed to capture that strategic thing. It was a lot of work. So we got more. <laughs> Just more. Let's capture everything. We don't have time to think about it. Let's make a feature list. It, it was like a mix of things, and we needed to really sift through it and also understand for ourselves uh, what worked. The alignment on the direction set by management around the strategic change was really there because we put a lot of efforts into like that. This was clear, just the way how to get there was just in these OKRs somehow, uh, but this still worked. Uh, what really didn't work? So like, we, we, it took us a really long time to do that. Uh, the company OKRs were basically finished in mid-January and the squad OKRs then finished mid-February. And those are for one quarter. So half of the quarter is over. And we only know now uh, what things we want to move the needle on, basically. Uh, we had more objectives and key results, AKA an indicator for less focus, yeah, maybe. Uh, there was a general confusion and frustration about the OKR framework. Like, okay, we know what's going on, we're going to do that. Why do we need it? Uh, <coughs> measurements, again, often not possible. Uh, there was often no connection between work and outcome goals. Maybe we didn't like it. Uh, at this point, it became clear okay, something, something wrong. This stuff is eating up time. Why are we doing this? I know what I should do. Uh, what are we doing? So, okay, what were the changes? Uh, we set our goal for Q2 then, after going through this Q1, was okay, we basically have to achieve this strategic goal. That's it. Yeah. Um, we stopped using OKRs and just set milestones. Deliver this better. Uh, we, we kept some stuff. Yeah. So we stopped the big workshops and the OKR moderator role. So no more big workshop stuff with everyone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and no more OKR moderators. What we kept is the tool that we used to do the goal setting because it provided the transparency and we kept the checklist. Uh, what we then focused on is creating a functioning, transparent framework for output management. So all the stuff that's basically, am I getting to that? Yes. Company backlog, roadmap, and empirical process control. We really focus heavily on laying that as a foundation. Yeah. To be really able to say, okay, we are to deliver this by then. Okay. Let's estimate how much work is this? What's our velocity? When are we going to get <laughs> the stuff we had already, but we didn't uh, do it consistently over our team. Um, as well, we introduced a one-pager format that kind of that described initiatives through a problem statement uh, with quantitative and quantitative and qualitative goals. We basically moved the outcome stuff to the uh, initiative level. Yeah. We said, okay, how do we know that this is why we're doing this? Well, so basically from the other way around, yeah. So as we see. <coughs> That leads us to 22 objectives, 86 key results, like not really. Uh, why is it still so much? What worked? Funnily enough, the marketing team uh, had a different idea and thought, okay, that's a good idea, and they adopted it. Before they didn't. And for them, it really worked. Really. <laughs> uh, the milestone list, we had it in there as binary key results, like either done or not done. And then we used the confidence levels that we would get in these okay, art check ins. To, as a communication tool, an alignment tool between um, the teams and management. We say, look, the team thinks it's 0 0.3 likelihood, 30% likelihood only that we will get it by then. So we face a choice. Yeah? We get in, we reduce scope. What do we do? And that really worked. So the alignment on this level was really there. 
Uh, what didn't work, measuring results, because we weren't asked to do that. Thinking in outcomes, because we were asked to deliver this by then. And I care about the outcome, well, delivered my thing, yeah? Team involvement, also. The teams uh, felt that a lot of this stuff, and didn't really feel like this, was just handed down to them. And there, there was not a lot of room or autonomy or bringing in uh, your skills in the best way. But it was more like, yeah, okay, do this now. Yeah? What? It's got us thinking again. Yeah? Hmm. What did we learn from this milestone in combination with one paper? Yeah? Uh, we learned that it's important to write as much context as possible and bake that into the context, uh, into the, the process. So, um, through this, through understanding our initiatives better, this was, uh, as you get learning for everyone. Yeah, We're just filling out the points on these one pages and got people thinking about, ah, okay, so in this context, I know this is like the thing I want developed. Why do I actually want it? Ah, okay, okay, okay. And this was a collaborative thing. We basically did together and this made us as a whole company, I think, uh, have a learning together about this stuff, which is really important. Rather than saying, hey, this is something we want to work about. So just go ahead with it. Uh, thinking about the cost and benefits of features uh, through these one pages, uh, in my mind, laid the groundwork for an outcome-based mindset. So, yeah, you want to have different opinions on this? Ask chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they will share. Uh, aligning with scope, uh, scope and cost of features with management. What you that uh, became easier through transparency provided by the empirical participation industry. So we were actually able to say, look, until this date, with a burn-up graph, we, we can get this and actually meet this feature set. Yeah. This uh, basically make this conversation more equal, and less basically, I think it may just make more concrete. And the necessity of the build, measure, learn cycle became more apparent to us by creating more visibility on the impact, or even more importantly, non-impact of developed features afterwards. Because we could say, look, we built that now. We, we said, strong personal belief, it's gonna do that. It didn't. Yeah, even though your belief was so strong. Uh, the next thing is that the important thing for us is really like on the core of the whole thing was achieving alignment and measuring our progress to what we want to achieve together and not being the case study for the OKR okay, family. <coughs> so we told ourselves a little bit, okay, relax. We know we have nothing, everything that we get more in, to that direction from this point is basically good. For, yeah. So relax. So, what are the changes for the second half year of 2019? Uh, our goal, that we said for us, is we want to develop the right things. And I'm going to tell you why it's the second half of 2019. <coughs> we want to develop the right things and check the effectiveness of changes to create alignment. Yeah, and create alignment. Um, so, we started an initiative to reintroduce OKRs. Not the wrong quarter of not doing them. Oh, my God. Uh, we do, we uh, reduced the scope of the whole thing. We only did it with the three product teams, but we did the whole slice. So the whole vertical slice. So management, the three product teams. Yeah. Uh, we also rebranded them to get rid of the bad feelings around people saying, okay, let's just call them outcome goals. <laughs> 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 What we also did is we created a very clear process and who does what by when to reduce the setup time for the fusion. This is that over here. Yeah. And this is just what we are doing at the moment and what fits in our context. And that's just executive management, the product owner and business owners, business owners of overall. <coughs> it's basically the person that uh, the product owner can 
play ping pong with and has a lot of business knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and the squads for the schools. So this process basically lays out okay, executive management, they create company level OKRs, inform then the product owner and business owner who give feedback, then this feedback gets uh, acknowledged, worked in, then the company level also got frozen. Uh, it goes to the again information stage. Then uh, the squads come basically in the product owner and business owner inform the squads. And here we have a feedback cycle in which uh, basically executive management and the squad agrees on uh, the uh, on the squad level outcome. They're initially created by the squads, but then basically agreed upon and signed off by the CEO. Yeah? The same thing then happens for the initiatives. And that is of course, sometimes it happens a little bit at the same time. Yeah? Uh, the same thing happens for the initiatives, where now <coughs> the period the process control is, where we have a lot of transparency in what we plan to for when we aim to spend so much time. Uh, so again, they come from the team and basically then uh, go through a feedback cycle and agree upon and then make it. We will then, through this, we were also able to connect all the initiatives and the product backlog that we now have and roadmap with uh, the respective yeah. Why not? Um, how much time does that take? We did that, that once, and I think it took about three to four weeks in total. Yeah. Uh, we changed the cadence to a half yearly, the uh, setting of company and team outcome goals. Uh, seemed to fit us better. We didn't want to do it twice. We felt very driven by that stuff. Oh, shit, we need to do it again. Uh, so for us, this has. It's the first cycle. So I don't have the next slide. <laughs> we'll see. <coughs> but at the moment, it works quite well. Uh, and this time, we focus less on, uh, on process, but more switch the focus on getting measurable, well understood numbers for the stuff that we set goals for. That's something that made sense for the numbers. Um, as well, we introduced the difference between impact and outcome. And sometimes we have, okay, product development team, make this much revenue. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically too much because the way from us with revenue was very uh, <coughs> long, even though we can draw the line. Uh, but we said basically, okay, there is impact, like high level business impact, like revenues, and so on. And they have to be distinguished from outcomes, which are. Uh, these user behaviors that create value that we want to measure, et cetera, like that. Looks like this. Yeah, it's crazy neon, it's this revival outside. <laughs> uh, so what we do now is basically, um, we have a budget, which is the impact level, right? Which is the cost <coughs> down there. And how much money we think we should make, and how much houses we want to transact, and all that good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Um, then, underneath that, come the, so this is like set yearly and can be adjusted quarterly. Yeah. Uh, then we have the, the outcomes. So this is on company and team level, uh, the outcomes. Basically, metal pairs and it's user behavior. It's not our actual goals, it's just some examples of what it could be. Set yearly, can be adjusted quarterly, can be assigned a goal half yearly, or agree on it. That's the And then, this is this one pager thing. Yeah? We call them famously Steckbriegel. Everyone does. Yeah, no matter the language, it's always called Steckbriegel. Many pronouns, the actual word is always Steckbriegel. Also, company and teams uh, cost an outcome are measured here. And they live basically on company and prioritize the company. Here's a question <laughs> from Berlin uh, How many goals per team per Maximum half three year? Maximum with three key results each. Per half year? Yes. Maximum one with 
three key results? Three objectives maximum with one objective having three key results. Maximum. Okay, thanks. And that's the, the moment. We sometimes break that rule. <laughs> it's not perfect yet, like you said. <laughs> so, uh, this is a constant collection refinement and prioritization of that stuff. We can always come in. This is going to set another idea what we need to do tomorrow. Um, then, uh, output level management is basically done on a team level. Time estimation slash tracking, yes, we do it with the story points, but in the end, put it in a graph, which makes it as something about time when something will be finished. We do the process control uh, on the roadmap and the burnout graph. This is a quarterly planning cycle, but on which team does what, but it's adjusted basically every two weeks or more like all the time. Um, and then on the lowest level, we have basically user stories and tasks. <laughs> they live on the team level and the control instruments here, the burnout graph in the generations of the teams. Yeah, so this is how it's all connected, basically. Um, so where does that land us? Now, 12 objectives in total and 24 key results. Yeah, so we drastically reduce the thing. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't add the animation. Okay. <coughs> so it works now. So the connections between outcome goal and initiatives, user stories. You can clearly see uh, what impact that thing is supposed to have. Not to measure. Measurement of outcome goals works more than as before. Uh, the buy in for a framework is there more from uh, all sides and from the people who are doing it. What still doesn't work is so we still have some binary goals. It uh, just we put this stuff. Uh, like my belief now is that if you have something like this, it's better to put it there as what it is than to like kind of make this weird thing around it. It makes it seem like an outcome goal, but really what everyone expects is that thing, if that's what I am. So then you can also have a, a conversation around it. And the goal of managing <coughs> is that just maybe use the confidence level to, as a communication device. Um, not everyone is involved now. We reduced, of course, the uh, scope of the whole thing drastically. It's uh, the product teams, I think, yeah, the five, and uh, marketing at the moment. But still, for them, it's still less. Uh, <coughs> the planning is at the moment completely based on those outcomes. We actually do that now. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> we're talking too long. The planning is not completely based on the outcomes yet. So uh, the thing is that sometimes we also did reverse engineering. We want to do that. We want to measure its impact. So yeah. sorry, yeah, we're confused there for a second. Um, using of leading indicators, we don't know what they are at the moment. We're gonna go super predictive. With this stuff. So most of the stuff that we have is this lane. It's like, okay, how many transactions? Is there a possible lagging indicator? I mean, depends on the context, of course, on the conversation around that, but we don't know what our super effective leading indicators are. Learnings overall. What did all of that teach me, teach us? Uh, so I would go for a start if you start that initiative. Start with a small but vertical slice. Yeah. <coughs> you need management buy-in. You need the, the managers that you know what is in your company that you need to convince. Uh, start with a vertical slice. Like have everyone involved because otherwise you run into these kind of alignment problems. Uh, and you're not able to learn on how to do this alignment best the vertical. Yeah. And then you can basically scale that. Uh, provide guidance and context to make autonomy work. Uh, I think one of our mistakes, or maybe my mistake when I when I joined, is that I thought that just giving complete autonomy is the way to go. Because then people have freedom, they can use their creativity to create amazing outcomes. Yeah. 
but that is too wide a field. Like, okay, what exactly? You, know? you need to find out the proper level of guidance and context. You need to give as much context as possible, I would say, and then try to give as little like, prescriptive guidance as little as possible and as much as needed. Yeah. We'll have to define what that means for your context. Depends on the team, depends on the company, depends on this, on many things. Yeah. But uh, it helps to have an open conversation with your project. With everyone involved. Uh, yeah, consider your context. I think uh, one of the things uh, that I do not believe in this anymore yeah, is that, okay, it's like Scrum. Yeah? Uh, if you're not doing that, this is not Scrum, don't call it Scrum. Yeah? Uh, okay, ours, if you're not doing this, uh, and uh, then it's not okay, ours, you're not doing it. You should have a good reason for doing all that stuff. You should know that reason. If you don't know that reason, it's not going to work. And then it doesn't matter what, what you call it. Yeah? So I've been through this uh, big workshop style uh, of everyone gets introduced to that now. Yay! Eh. Produced eh, results. Uh, the best thing I've seen now is that you really start with something that, that is useful for your context and solves an actual problem. So if you connect it like this, it works better. Um, the whole thing is more marathon than a sprint. You're not there yet. And we spent probably more than a year. Yeah. Because also you have to, I think, consider the change, uh, the pace of the change that you introduce on the cognitive load that means for the people in the teams. So if you change everything all the time, uh, it's just hard to follow through with it. Especially if you have to take on new knowledge and integrate that into your, your everyday work. Uh, then you make these things work and then also make this thing work and that thing work. Yeah. So uh, I think make small adjustments and never lose like the end goal as you get out of sight. Uh, focus on finding the right measurements over perfecting the process. All of this stuff is only in my mind, like I was treating it as a process thing in the beginning, but it's really not. It's all about the numbers. It's all about what is the right thing that we want to measure. Is that the right thing to go after? Yeah. So what you really have to like invest in, I think, is analytics knowledge, knowledge about uh, how can I <coughs> measure things, what numbers uh, make sense and other stuff. And not like, okay, how do, who attends which thing? <coughs> like if I would start with one thing now, it's talking, it's creating uh, basically like a, a structure of the KPIs that kind of represents how the business works and what the synergies are. Yeah, I think this is the, the, the point to start with. And then, because then you find out, okay, what should I influence? Maybe you know that already, go for process. Yeah. Thank you. This is the book that I based most of this stuff on. This is from Joshua Simon, I showed you a of Lean UX fame and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, learn more about that stuff than I do. Uh, maybe read that, it helped us a lot. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> So, questions and answers. Exactly. Um, try something out. So, as we have um, been doing there as well. And I've been on the other side of, of, the, uh, of this kind of like conversation. So, I fell into um, a Berlin meetup. And um, <coughs> I found it was difficult to feel the passion there. So, I'm going to try something out. Um, I would say, um, Berlin peeps, um, if you have questions, you can write it on the chat. And if you want it to um, say it out loud instead of me reading it out loud because you have to add something, um, then let me know in the chat. At the same time, I will use my phone as kind of a microphone and will give it a round um, so that you can ask your question into my phone. Uh, the, 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 Let's try that out. Okay. Um, I need to mute this. Okay. Who goes first? Hi. Um, thank you very much. First, for the presentation. Um, I was wondering when we did when you did all those changes uh, in OKRs, outcome goals. Um, 
did you have an op outcome in mind? I mean, uh, you mentioned like focus on alignment uh, multiple times. And if yes, how do you measure alignment? Mm -hmm. uh, so the goal of the whole thing was to uh, give us a view on how we are progressing in our goals, what our goals are, and make sure that everyone is working in the same direction. So alignment. Uh, how I would measure alignment, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, you know, it's it's funny. I worked with a, a dude once who said we measure gold quality by how many what the fucks per minute the gold really produces. <laughs> I would say the same thing. It's like, uh, ask, just ask the uh, qualitative your people. Do you think that mm -hmm. when was there a fuck up? Is there something that uh, you weren't aware of that the other ones are doing? Yeah. Ask for the, okay, the, hey, management dudes, how's the feeling with you? You know what your teams are doing? Are they doing the right thing? And depending on those answers, you can basically, I think, gauge and somehow measure it. Yeah. Uh, but also maybe the absence of uh, success might be with you. <laughs> sure. Coming. So you introduce the switch from OKRs to outcomes, and there is this uh, very short but very effective definition from out, uh, for, for the outcomes. Um, was that what helped people better resonate with the new framework, or, or what made the difference, in your opinion? It helped me understand it better because it helped me make a difference between okay, why doesn't the team get just revenues? Because yeah, of course we have an immediate impact on that. Um, I cannot speak for all the teams, but I think uh, that, that this really helped because basically uh, seeing it as that okay, we as product development, what do we do? What do we want to create? What is our place in this? Yeah? Is it to create revenue? Can I ask but how do we do that? Yeah? Mm. Do that by basically uh, inciting or giving the user the opportunity to express a certain behavior on our platform. Mm -hmm. So this is for me, this, this was the, for me the mind switch that made it work and uh, yeah, made the difference. So you would say that you were better able to express the goals to, to the teams. Can I understand it like that? Yes, I think we were able to uh, find a concise way of, okay, what's a deal about? Mm. That made it easier for really, the communication. Okay, thanks. No, because I'm asking because we had very similar statements from our engineering teams where they were saying, well, you want us to contribute revenue, but it's so far away from us or it's very hard to relate to those numbers. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks. And, and for me, it also makes sense that you can say, okay, but this behavior is really what then leads in the end, because then you can draw the line. Yeah. And kind of it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next one. Um, you mentioned one of the key learnings was uh, sharing the context and making sure that their context is understood. What was the best medium or way of doing that? These one pages. One, so you keep, one kept those. Uh, okay. In the beginning, yeah. Um, and then now, I think after the next cycle, <laughs> what I'm trying, what we are trying to do together is to create a breakdown of okay, what we want to like the uh, business impact might be that we want uh, this and that many transactions or this and that transaction volume. Uh, those are the company outcomes that create that, and they kind of create a breakdown of all these uh, metrics. You maybe has to go into that. Kind of make up this thing in the end so that we can point them and say, Here we change the user behavior to influence that. Mm -hmm. And then this will then, in my mind, replace uh, this context that is given on this, this feature level. Well, maybe not replace it, but create the same thing for the outcomes as well. Okay. Yeah. But for us, that it was really the, the opposite. And just framing it in a way that takes into consideration why we're doing it, what we want to achieve with it, and how we measure it. <laughs> Sorry, I have one question. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, so, how did you identify and prioritize outcomes? 
will be my question. Mm -hmm. Well, we use but, this, uh, this process here. Now, where is it? This thing, yeah? So, uh, what we did um, um, first is that we went really from this impact level, and we said we started basically, uh, it was a workshop, I think, that the product leadership team had with the CEO, and we were like, okay, what do we want to achieve? Like for the next half year, and first of all, and this is what we started with, that's it's the right thing, but we that off, uh, is basically budget, uh, the goals for the company uh, in, in that respect, yeah? okay, how much transactions we have to, uh, uh, <coughs> what do we basically, because as transaction every platform, we want to offer our users an easy way to uh, basically do those transactions, transparent and all that stuff. So the budget was one dimension, the strategy was another dimension. Uh, and we basically took that into account, broke down the numbers of the budget, uh, looked at our strategy and set them down. And then we used basically this here uh, to give the teams a little bit more context. Like, hey, look, uh, we think like what you should do for that is basically increase the effectiveness of X or uh, build uh, something that allows us to uh, Onboard ex customers from a new customer segment, and then we had a conversation with the team. So, this is how they got created. Good. One yeah. question from Berlin <laughs> um, Could you elaborate a bit on how quarterly planning is structured and working for you? E.g., who is involved? How long does it take? What is the outcome of the planning, etc.? We don't plan quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> But I can, yes. So, what do you so do it's then? really, uh, if you look, it's really this process. This is how it's structured. <laughs> uh, here you see, maybe I can elaborate a little bit more and say this executive management column often means uh, um, so the director of product, the director of UX, the director of engineering, together with the CEO. But this is what it meant the first time. Could you maybe point with the cursor so that. Point with the cursor here. Yeah. Yeah. This is this column kind of. Is there not? Can I not? I've never used this. Mm -hmm. yes. There, yeah. <laughs> um, how long does this take? This took us three, four hours. Just that we just that part. Yeah. Uh, the initial part was I think we did it in like a week, two, three months. Yeah. Hour. Something like this. Yeah. It was a two-way conversation between three of us and the CEO. Yeah. I think that part, then the next part is uh, getting feedback from the teams and like all of this is basically in there. Um, then uh, generating the, the team outcomes. I think then let me lie, it's like a, a two weeks or something. Yeah. Also because we're doing it for the first time. And then generating like this initial uh, checklist the stuff that uh, because we were doing it also. Uh, Continuously didn't take that long. It was stuff that was already there. It was new things. Uh, I think we also defined. It's hard to say. I would say a week, but we do this on an ongoing basis. So we cannot really put it on the like this. And uh, who is involved? Uh, here you see product owner and business owner. Uh, they basically provide feedback on this company outcomes and the teams, then uh, so the squad. But I have to say that the product owners are at full freedom to integrate the team if they want, yeah, at that stage. And uh, of course, when it comes to the drafting uh, of the squad level outcomes, uh, the team is fully involved. So what does that mean? That means cross-functional product development team. That means uh, product owner, engineers, UXers, UX researchers, UX writers, Great, thank you. And enough collaboration. Berlin? Other questions? Thank you, Wesson. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned uh, you've changed things from one quarter to another, and by now it's all looking better and better. What do you think was important in keeping credibility with the teams that uh -huh. you're 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 on the right path with each iteration? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who I possess? Um, <laughs> um, well, just be honest. I don't know. Like for, for me, it's like there's some stuff I can influence, some stuff I cannot influence. This it's a startup. It's crazy. Sometimes stuff uh, is happening. We need to react fast. We want to exploit a business opportunity that is not everyone immediately understands, and then. Just, uh, yeah, uh, be honest to all the other, I'm talking from management perspective, of course, yeah. So be uh, honest, be open for feedback, uh, empathize with people's frustrations maybe around the stuff, and then take basically also their, uh, their feedback seriously. Plus, uh, I would always, always acknowledge the situation if you, that you basically face with, like, okay, we are not good at this. This sucks, and we're gonna keep it for this quarter. But our goal is not this, our goal is to improve it. Uh, so let's find out together how we could do that. And maybe you have a suggestion, and then, yeah. This has been a good source of uh, basically improving the whole thing, just the feedback we get from everyone. Yeah. So this is how, and I think, uh, yeah, towards other management is towards the top. Always uh, know the why you're doing that stuff. What you want to achieve with it. All that is a benefit to the company. Yeah. Well, I think one thing that helped us is really saying, look, in order to really spend our money in the right place, this is what we need to do uh, because we need to check because we don't know. And then, of course, like also, uh, yeah, owning also the failure, I guess. Okay, if something doesn't work, it's yes, this didn't work at all, but it doesn't mean that the whole system may be flawed. It just means that we're maybe not using it very beneficially. <laughs> Does it answer the question? Okay. Begin to answer it, maybe. It's a, it's a big it's question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the other perspective you can get from cats or. Family. Let's maybe take two more questions. Um, yeah, it was just here. Ladies first. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, to this point, uh, connect all initiatives to the product backlog and roadmap with respective outcome. Um, you have the the uh, outcomes that are then for six months and your product roadmap is like how long in advance do you normally we plan? We and plan three iterations in advance, which is one and a half months. But sometimes we have, we already know that uh, okay. stuff is going longer. But we change it all the time. So I would say like what we aim for is to have uh, um, basically just know what's coming. We can still change it. But we want to be uh, like one and a half months, ahead, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And how um, like, did you experience that your outcome kind of went in one direction and your roadmap in another, or what were your? How did that pan out for you? Yeah, yeah that happened. Usually, then uh, it, it didn't happen. I think in this quarter we only had one queue somewhere out in this half uh, year. We have one queue somewhere that says that is the case. Uh, this really say, okay, let's learn from this, let's change it next time, let's not use that AR anymore. And like before, in the quarters before, this also happened and it just led to an abandonment of the whole thing. And uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have one question about uh, how you got those 120 people brainwashed. Um, you, mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned that you, you had uh, moderators. Yeah. And I'm interested in um, those moderators. Are they dedicated moderators or did they no. do the job part time? How much percent? 30%. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the idea was that we spent maybe, so it was just people getting teams, um, there were more roles, so it was just you know, people who maybe wanted some more responsibility. There were a couple of people who really exercised that role and other people and it didn't. So I would say from 30% to zero or like one. 
Because I, yeah, uh, depending on the team. Um, so they were not dedicated. They were just, they had that role for their team. Yeah. This is how we did it, but it was not, yeah. I, I'm not sure if it needs a dedicated person to do it. Maybe uh, if your organization has four masters, uh, they will be like open or, or stuff like this. Uh, but usually Scrum Masters are more trained in uh, optimizing for delivery. So the discovery and processing stuff is not part of the package there. Uh, but you can train that, of course, and they have more mind codes. Or agile coaches are there. Right, Mike, I have a final question. Yeah. Um, would you be able to share your template, let's call it so, like how you approach conferences maybe with the community and have an example of that? I can share the points that we use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would be really nice. Um, anyway, I'm super curious about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Magnus, for, uh, for all the insights that you've Thank shared. You. Thank you. Thank you. All the learning. Yes, um, say the one flower.